Okay, this is uh, film class, uh, week seven, part one. Uh, fall of 2021. Uh, you guys have been watching videos. Uh, I'm dressed like this, by the way, to celebrate the movie, which is Virgin Suicides, this week. Uh, so obviously go watch Virgin Suicides and then come back here and watch these lectures. You probably figured that out already. Uh, but I, I tried to wear my best 70s outfit. I'm not actually going to keep the sunglasses on all the time. It's going to be crazy. Um, but I, I, this is, uh, I'm speaking now to the fall of 2021 film class. Uh, this is the only video uh, for you guys that was actually recorded for you. All the other videos you're watching were all made uh, last year uh, for a previous film class. And I didn't realize the pandemic would go as long as it would. Um, I, uh, in, in, in the past, I had shown Wizard of Oz at this point. Uh, in the semester. And it is a great movie, and if you would like to go watch Wizard of Oz, you know, go do it. You'll hear me, by the way, make reference in other videos in Unit the, unit 2 uh, to the Wizard of Oz. Um, and it's not a big deal. You're not missing a ton of stuff. It's not huge. I just, it's a movie I, I play. So, um, uh, anyway, but if you'd like to watch Wizard of Oz, you know, go do it for fun. Um, but I've changed the, the, I've changed, that's the only movie this semester that I changed. I decided I wanted to do Virgin Suicides. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's take, it's, it's for complicated reasons also. I mean, I, I just, I, I wanted to have a, a movie in here that was directed by a young woman. Uh, it doesn't really solve the diversity problem because of course we don't have directors, I don't have any directors in this class who are black, for example. Uh, and probably one director that's a woman is not sufficient, but uh, it did seem like a good idea. And also, Virgin Suicide is a fucking cool movie. Uh, uh, so I thought I would, uh, I would, I would do that film for you today. Um, all right, so let's just, let's go watch Virgin Suicides and come back here and we've got our lecture going and here we go. So, Virgin Suicides. Um, Virgin Suicides also is slightly different from the other movies we watched in this class because theoretically the units are supposed to show you movies that lead up to uh, the David Lynch film. So, so that all of the movies in the Blue Velvet unit were made before Blue Velvet. All of the movies in the Mulholland Drive unit were made before Mulholland Drive. Virgin Suicides is, is different because it was made in year 2000, which is three years after Lost Highway, which is the final movie, the David, the David Lynch movie that ends Unit 2, uh, is Lost Highway. It was made in 1997. Virgin Suicides was actually made after. Um, I'm still including it in Unit 2 because it, it focuses on a similar subject. Uh, so the ideas that, that Sofia Coppola is using in her movie of, of the Virgin Suicides are very similar, interestingly and strangely similar, uh, to the ideas that David Lynch is, is, is going after in his movie Lost Highway. So when we get there, it'll be really fun. Um, Okay, so uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about... Before I start Virgin Suicides, I, I want to talk about a little bit who, who Sofia Coppola is. Um, she's an interesting person. Uh, and normally I don't talk a lot about directors' biographies, but in her case, I, I think it's slightly worth going over. So Sofia Coppola's dad uh, is Francis Ford Coppola, um, who directed the Godfather films. And the Godfather films um, are some of the most, most, most important and famous movies ever made. Um... Sofia Coppola was actually in the third Godfather movie, and she was much, she was a young, as a young woman, she was in the, 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 the third Godfather movie, and the third Godfather movie is notorious because the first two Godfather movies are considered to be masterpieces of American filmmaking, and the third Godfather movie is, like, considered to be terrible, and one of the reasons it's considered to be terrible is because Sofia Coppola was not great in it. Um, Andy Garcia is also in it, I think people didn't really like him, um... I'll tell you the truth, I've actually never seen the third Godfather movie because people said it was so bad. Um, Coppola recently returned to editing it together into a better form, and the new one's supposed to be better, and then people were like, actually, it, all, it was never that bad, people just trashed it. Anyway, it's complicated. The important thing uh, to bring up about Sofia Coppola is she has a very famous dad. Um, this is important because Sofia Coppola is a filmmaker who is a bit like... David Lynch, in the sense, and she's a bit like David Lynch, and she's a bit like uh, Wes Anderson, uh, who did Grand Budapest Hotel and Royal Tenenbaums and Rushmore, um, which are all extraordinary films. Um, what they have, and what David Lynch, uh, Wes Anderson, and Sofia Coppola have in common is that they're making movies around the year. They have movies around the year two thousand for one. Um, but the other thing about them is that they all, th all three of those people didn't make a ton of movies. They, they have a limited number of movies. Woody Allen for Hitchcock. Woody Allen and Hitchcock, for example, have like 55 movies each. Um, Sofia Coppola, Wes Anderson, and David Lynch, they all have like eight. <laughs> um, they are, they, they were, Sofia Coppola started really young, which is also true of, of the other two, I think. Um, but she, she was quite young when she, when she started her film career, because of course she had her dad's help and her dad's like super famous. Um, 
The other thing that links up Sofia Coppola, uh, David Lynch, and Wes Anderson is that they, uh, and this is something that could be seen as a complaint, although I think it's my favorite thing about them, which is that they have a tendency to keep making movies about the same thing. Um, I don't find that boring. Um, to me, that does not indicate boredom. To me, what it indicates is that they have an idea they're trying to work out. Um, and so that their movies, they all feel, all their movies feel connected to each other. Ridley Scott, for example, is a director whose movies don't seem connected. He made the only movie, and they made Thelma and Louise, and they're cool, you know, and they're kind of feminist, I guess. But, like, he doesn't necessarily feel like a guy, he just feels like he wants to film, a, Steven Soderbergh is a better example. Steven Soderbergh is a director who just makes all kinds of different movies. He just wants to try new stuff. But Sofia Coppola, Wes Anderson, and David Lynch are all kind of, their movies are kind of similar uh, to the other movies they've made. They feel connected in a way. Tarantino is a bit like this too, also making movies around the year 2000. I think he dated Sofia Coppola briefly, actually. Um, anyway, uh, she's, she's interesting. All of her movies revolve around the same kind of thing, um, which is that every single Sofia Coppola movie has to do with young women who are famous and sometimes have very important father figures. Um, now, there's not a very important father figure in um, in in Virgin Suicides, but in the other ones there is. And, and she has a movie called Somewhere, and she has a movie called On the Rocks, and she has another movie. She has Marie, uh, Marie Antoinette. Uh, it's, uh, she has a bunch of movies, but they all involve famous young women, which is, of course, what she's doing is she's working on her own childhood. Uh, she was very famous. She, she had a lot of eyes on her because she was the daughter of a very, the most famous American filmmaker. Um, and so she was put into a world of fame very quickly. Um, and all of her movies involve young women wrangling with fame uh, in small ways, like in Virgin Suicides, where these girls are just kind of locally famous in their town, and in big ways like Marie Antoinette, where she's, you know, the queen of France. Um, uh, anyway, I just, I really like that about Sofia Coppola, that she has a kind of a, a focus. Um, okay, cool. Um, all right, so let's let's jump in and talk about, oh, I'm so excited to be making a video again. I just, I feel like I'm like, you know, back with my sunglasses on. I wore sunglasses, for, I, I, I grabbed the sunglasses. I think these are too big for me to wear in real life, but they're funny, I don't know. Um, so let's jump in and talk about, um, actually, I'm gonna keep, do a little more context still. Um, let's start with this. The movie, uh, it says at the beginning of the movie, it's like 25 years earlier or whatever. Um, so for starters, the narrator of the film is, alive when the film is made in the year the, the film is made in the year 2000 and it tells the story of what happened in 1975 the only way you can know you have to kind of do math because the movie was made in 2000 and the guy says this happened seven, you know, 25 years ago and it's 1975 um it's interesting to me that that we are almost as far away from the film version suicides as the film version suicides is from the world it portrays um we're kind of half with the you know uh it, the, the, the making of the movie is sort of halfway between the present day and the uh, and and the the when the movie takes place. Um, nineteen seventy five is the, the, the America in the nineteen seventies is a really interesting time. I think if I could live in any decade, uh, I would probably choose America in the nineteen seventies. Um, the films were interesting, um, but it, there's a, it's a crucial window for sex, and that's very much what Virgin Suicides is about, um, because. The, 19, the America of the 1970s is right between two things that really changed how people think about sex. Um, in the 1960s, you had the birth control pill. Uh, and this changed a lot of things because suddenly women could have recreational sex for fun without being worried about getting pregnant. Um, obviously, people had condoms before, but you had, that was that was with condoms. You're relying on the men to bring the birth control, um, but with the with the pill, women had a kind of sexual freedom uh, that they did not have before uh, early in earlier times. Um, and so it's a it's a it's a kind of a, it's a, and, and and also the sort of social rules are changing about relationships between men and women, so they have more opportunity. Um, so it's post birth control pill. But it's pre-AIDS, um, which because the thing about AIDS was that suddenly people had the birth control pill, and it was like, oh, we can have sort of sex and this just recreational sex for fun. And then AIDS hits, and suddenly you have sex. When I was growing up, I was told if you have sex with anyone, you will die. Um, so the, the, it's in a kind of the, the dreamy magic land of the 1970s portrayed in this movie is very much about that in between era, um, between the birth control pill, which is from the 60s, and AIDS. Uh, which is the, the big AIDS crisis in the 90s. Okay, cool. I'll see you in the next video.